Hello, and welcome to 7.2, Properties of Parallelograms. We have at the very top of our notes today, three questions for the do now. So why don't you take a second, pause the video, and try the do now. You are looking for the number of sides for each of these three scenarios. Try the do now. Go ahead and pause. For the first one, you should have gotten 18 sides. For the second one, you should have gotten 20 sides. And for the third one, you should have gotten 30 sides. All right, let's scroll down to the quadrilateral family tree. So we have a lot of different boxes here. We're just going to talk about them really quick. We'll go into more detail in just a minute. Um, for now, though, let's look at the far right side. So in this box here is going to be the kite. And we will talk about the kite um, actually more at the very end. We won't get to it until probably about 7.5. In the middle here, we actually need to get rid of one of these boxes. A little bit of a typo. I got a little copy happy. But down here, in our next box down, we're going to put a parallelogram. And we know that parallelograms have uh, opposite sides are parallel to each other. When we get a little more in-depth into parallelograms, we know that this can split into a rhombus. A rhombus has all sides are congruent, right? All sides are congruent with a rhombus. It also splits into a rectangle. Um, a rectangle, we know, has opposite sides are congruent and all right angles. And then the last one down here is a square where all of the sides are congruent to each other and all of the angles are 90 degree angles. So that leaves us with our far left side. We're going to start with a trapezoid. All right, a trapezoid that has one set of parallel sides, one set, and a special trapezoid is called an isosceles trapezoid. All right, isosceles trapezoid. Um, and why we care about that one is because we have these two sides are congruent. So these sides are parallel, which is how trapezoids normally are, is with the top and bottom, the base is parallel. But the isosceles is important because we know these two uh, end pieces here, these two sides are congruent. So we know quadrilaterals have four sides. We've known that since, you know, September. It's been a long time. Let's take a look at some of our special properties, all right? So if we flip over to the next page, the definition of a parallelogram is... A quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So we know that AB and DC are parallel and AD and BC are parallel. AD is parallel to BC and AB is parallel to DC. So let's learn about some of these theorems and why we care. The first theorem we're going to learn about is the parallelogram opposite sides theorem. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. Its opposite sides are congruent. So that means AD and BC are congruent. DC and AB are congruent. The reason we care about this is if we know the length of one side, then we know its opposite side length as well. And that can be really, really handy. The next theorem we're going to learn about, parallelogram opposite angles theorem. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. We can take this all the way back to chapter 3 when we were learning about parallel lines and angle identities, right? Or you can look at me and say, hey, cool, that's awesome. So we know that angle D is going to be congruent to angle B. Sorry, the page moved a lot there. And then angle A is going to be congruent to angle C. 
Again, if we know one of those angles, then we know the opposite angle as well, and that can be extremely handy. All right, the parallelogram consecutive angles theorem. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. That's because, um, in this case, for example, X and Y are consecutive interior angles because AD and BC are parallel. DC is the transversal. Hey, look at that. Back to our angle identities. I told you, it's like they never go away. So we have angle D plus angle C is going to equal 180. And then the last theorem on our list for parallelograms for today is if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then it's, and this is where we need to change this a little bit because I had a typo before I printed these. So it should say then it's diagonals bisect each other. It's diagonals bisect each other. So remember, bisect, bisect, by two sect sections. Two sections, what's special about them? They're congruent. So this diagonal here, DB, if it is bisected, that means DX is congruent to XB. AC is our next diagonal. It is bisected by DB, so that means AX is congruent to XC. So we've learned some theorems. Let's take a look at applying those. All right, for question number one here, we have a parallelogram, A, B, C, D. We know that we have A, B is 15. That means that we also know what D, C is because it's a parallelogram. So D, C is 15 by the um, opposite sides theorem. We know BC is 8. That means that AD is also 8 by the opposite sides theorem. So then we have that angle D is 68. Angle D is opposite angle B. So angle B is also 68 degrees. We need to figure out what angle A is. That's the biggest question mark that we have left. Because of the consecutive angles theorem, we know that angle A plus angle D equals 180. We're looking for angle A. Our angle D is 68 degrees. So when we subtract 68 from 180, we know angle A is equal to 112. So angle A is 112. All right, I'm going to skip number two and take a look at number three. So I'm sliding my page. You guys will practice with number two in just a sec. So for number three, we are looking for UT first. Well, UT is right here. We know UT is opposite 27, and by the opposite sides theorem, we know that UT is 27. The next we're looking for is SV. SV is this little section right here, and we know UV is 7. Remember, diagonals bisect each other. That means UV is congruent to SV. So SV is also 7. ST, that's this whole side length here. It's opposite RU. RU is 18. ST is 18. And then we are looking for VT. Well, there's a note right here that RT is 30. So VT plus RV is going to equal RT. But we know VT and RV are exactly the same. So VT plus VT, right? They're congruent to each other. So I have 2VT is equal to RT. But RT, we said, was 30. So that means if I divide both sides by 2, VT must be 15. VT must be 15. All right, let's do one more example before I have you guys practice on your own a little bit. We're going to take a look at number four. It says we want to solve for x. So we know LM is 9x minus 25, and we know PN 
is 5x plus 7. These are opposite sides. So by the parallelogram, opposite sides theorem, I know that they're congruent to each other. I know that they're equal. So we have 9x minus 25 is equal to 5x plus 7. I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. I'm going to add 25 on both sides. So I end up with 4x is equal to 32. When I divide 4 on both sides, we get an x equals 8. So I found my x. And I could plug it back in and figure out how long each of those sides is. All right, I want you guys to try number 2 and 5. All right, try number two and five. We'll go over the answers in just a minute. I hope you pause the video and now you've clicked play. For number two, angle J measures 127. The length of JK is 21. Angle M measures 53 degrees, as you can see here, because we knew angle L. I plugged it into my supplementary because angle M and L add to 180. So you get 53. And then KL is 29. I'm going to scroll so we can check out number 5. For number 5, we know that TV is equal to TW plus VW, or like we just had, we know that half of TV is equal to VW. So when you plug in your 74 and your 4x plus 1, you should get an x equals 9. x equals 9. We're going to take a look at the back side, so go ahead and pause, try those problems on the back, and we will go over those in just a second. Pause the video, try them for yourselves on the back. All right, for number six, these are opposite angles, so they are congruent to each other. I've got my setup, I plug them in, and you should get x equals 13. That's the same as example one on page 369. For number seven, NS is congruent to SQ. They are equal. So you have 2x plus 7 equals 5x minus 23, and you get an x of 10. And this scroll. Angle P plus angle Q equals 180. They are consecutive angles. So you end up with 11x minus 7 equals 180. So 11x equals 187. That means x is equal to 17. For number 9, you should get an x equals 3. You should get an x equals 3. For number 10, you should get an x equals 12. And then for number 11, our x is equal to 4. However, I ask you to find yz. So you have to plug that back in, and yz equals 45. yz equals 45. Please email me if you have questions. Go ahead and get started on the skills practice once you're done with your notes for today.